Hello and welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite horror games. Uh, it's got an element of betrayal as well as a whole lot of co-op and a couple of zombies on the side. Of course I mean Dead of Winter. I'm a very big fan of this game. Um, I will say it's a pain in the butt to set up. But once you get it down, it's a very, uh, very simple yet very brutal and punishing game. I don't know why I like that, but um, the idea of the game is that you are all part of a colony, uh, just trying to survive. There are zombies. Um, it is it is a zombie game, but it's not like like Zombicide, which I constantly refer to, where the zombies are actual characters bearing down on you. Uh, in this, they're more like a resource that needs to be managed. As long as they're there. You're fine. You, you're not going to actually individually fight them. Uh, they're more there as a looming threat that's kind of crushing down on you. And if they do get to be too many, like if there's too many at the doors, you do get overrun and die. Oh well. Uh, so you do need to pick them off occasionally. But most of what the game is, is just trying to survive. Uh, you have a team of people. Each person starts with two, but you can get more than that through drawing cards. And you're going throughout the city, trying to find, like you're going to the police station, the school, the gas station, and you're trying to find food, medicine, tools, weapons, books, you name it. Each time you play the game, uh, you start with a story card, and that's your kind of overall story. Uh, from there, each individual round has its own kind of minor crisis. The story sets the overall, and it sets how long the game is going to last with how many rounds, and it sets the general morale of the crew. If your morale drops to zero, you're all dead. Here's where the fun comes in, at least to me. At the very beginning of the game, you shuffle together some cards. These are secret cards. Most of these are just your own private, like, oh, you have a little daughter with you and you've got to get her medicine or you're diabetic and need extra insulin or you're saving food for a kid you saw. I Whatever. There's all kinds of different secret things, but they never really go contrary to the actual colony. They're just kind of something you have to do alongside the main quest. And actually, if you don't complete your secret goal, you don't win. Even if the colony succeeds, if you don't complete your secret goal, you, you lose. Some of the secret goals say betrayal. This is where the fun of the game comes in. You don't know if, you don't even know if there's a traitor. Maybe nobody's a traitor. You, 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 are you, are you a traitor? Are you, are you, are you a traitor? We don't know. Anybody could be, I could be the traitor. You could be the traitor. That's where the fun comes in. I have literally had games where every single person in the group was absolutely sure this person's the traitor. We're going to watch them. We're going to uh, keep an eye on them. They weren't the traitor. It was that guy over there. Uh, and part of that is because when you make your contributions to the team, you do them all face down and nobody sees what gets added until the end of the round. We need medicine. Sure, I'll, I'll give you medicine cards. Oh, who put those junk cards in there? That was him. It was that guy. He's been, he's been eyeing that stack all day. So that's where a lot of the fun comes in. The game is brutal, though. Like I said, if the zombies overrun you, then you, you die. Um, if you're in one of the locations, uh, the gas station, the police station, the school, the grocery store, you get too many zombies, bye-bye. Supplies are few and far between. It always seems like you need everything you're not getting and you're not getting everything you need the last round where you needed all that food could not find any food to save your life now this round where you need medicine psh, there's all the food no meds though the way the game is played you like i said start with two characters you could get more for each one you get you get to roll one die plus one for yourself so if you've drawn other characters and you got four you're rolling five dice the way the game works though, each character you can see they have stats. The higher the number, the weaker the stat because you need to roll that or higher. If a character has a six and a skill, you have to roll a six or they fail. If they have a one, you have to roll a one or higher on a d6. They pretty much can't fail. 
The way that it works is you roll all of your dice at the beginning of your turn, and then you allocate your successes there. It's not like, I'm going to attack that zombie, roll for attack. No, no. You roll all your dice, well, my attack is a five, but I have a six here, so I'm gonna use that for my attack. But this three, my search is only a two, so I have really good search. I'm just gonna use this three for the, the search, and I succeed on both. And that's, but you, you have to allocate that through all of your characters. Now, like I said, set up in this game, kind of a pain in the ass. Just to give you an idea, this is all the cards in the game. There's probably one, two, one, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different decks, I think. That's a lot of cards. Uh, they are set up throughout the game if they're each individual decks, but it's a lot to keep track of. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the components real quick. All right, so here we have our general setup of the game. Uh, you've got your colony board here in the center, and then kind of surrounding it are the different locations. Each location has its own deck of cards. On top of that, you've got your individual crises here. Uh, you've got your crossroad cards, which I have not explained, and your characters, just in case you draw extra characters. You put uh, their little symbols here for we're zombies. Anytime these symbols fill up, the zombies overrun. You have your occupants here. For the sake of this, I've chosen Arthur Thurston, the principal, Alexis Gray, the librarian, and my personal favorite, Forrest Plum, the mall Santa. Because who doesn't want a mall Santa in your survival colony? Anytime that you want to move your character, you have to roll the exposure die. The exposure die is a 12-sided die with different symbols on it. If you roll blank, you're fine. There's also a wound, which you just take one wound, three wounds and you're dead. There's a frostbite, which is a recurring wound. If you have frostbite, you get one wound every turn until you cure it. Then you have a one in 12 chance of rolling that. That tooth means not only do you die, everyone around you is now affected because you turn into a zombie and you start biting. Either they kill you or you kill them. It can kill a whole colony. So let's say Forrest here wants to move. I rolled perfect. So Forrest is gonna come check out the police station. Forrest is a really good fighter. So if there were, say, a zombie here, Forrest has a, an attack of two. So I have to roll a two or higher, which is pretty easy. Zombie is gone. Forrest has a five in search. He's not very good at searching, so Forrest is probably not somebody I would actually move. But if I had a successful search, I draw a card. Hey, I got a pistol. Okay, so I can equip Forrest with that pistol. Uh, throughout the decks, you'll see our outsiders draw a character card. Weapons, food, junk, fuel. Now, right before your turn, the person next to you draws one of these little babies. These are crossroad cards. Crossroad cards are an interesting little factor. They're usually some kind of a moral quandary where you have to decide one or two things. Whoever's reading the crossroad card to you knows the outcome. You do not. So it could be something like, hey, two people walk up to the gate with a child in tow. They ask for sanctuary. Do you let them in or not? You never know, and it's a judgment call every turn. And that's kind of fun. Uh, other aspects to consider, uh, you have a food supply over here. There's a bunch of food tokens. You have to have one for every two people in the colony. Anybody that like Forrest here who's out, he's considered to be foraging on his own. He's fine. Whoever's left in the colony, you need one food for every two people. Morale track is here, and if this hits zero, everybody but the betrayer loses. And lastly, you may wonder why there's six different locations and how they differ. Uh, if you look at the top of each card, I'll put it up on the screen here, uh, different locations have different things. Like for example, the police station has guns, fuel, tools, food, and people. The library, you're probably not gonna find a lot of guns, but you will find books. 
You're not going to find any medicine at the library, but the hospital's got tons of it. Same with the grocery store. So different locations have strengths in different areas. So it's up to you to decide where you go each turn. So like I said, set up, pain in the butt. But once you get through it, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the game is not all that complicated. It's just a lot of search, a lot of inventory management, and a lot of trying to figure out who's betraying you and who's not. If you suspect someone of being a betrayer, you can take a group vote and exile somebody, whether they're the betrayer or not. You could be wrong. You could exile Bob, and Bob is kicked out of the colony, and now Bob has his own goals. There's a whole deck of exile cards in here that are just for the exiled person so that they're not out of the game. And I think that's cool. Doesn't mean Bob's the betrayer. Whoever Bob is. I'm just, you could kick Bob out. Poor Bob. He's been helping all along. He's been putting that medicine in, giving food to the colony. Jim over here. Jim's not such a nice guy. Jim's been trying to make that morale drop because when the morale is gone, Jim wins. When you all die, Jim lives happily ever after. I don't know what it is about me. I love a good game where I can betray my friends and they can betray me. Um, I have a lot of hidden movement. I have a lot of lying games. Sheriff of Nottingham, a lot of fun. A couple of the social deduction games, good times. This game though, oh, this game will, oh, this will this will ruin some friendships, but in a good way. It is a lot of fun. It's very challenging. Uh, I'd say we out of the, all the times that we play this game, I think we've only won once or twice. But something about that is kind of, uh, it's very rewarding when you finally do win. You're like, yes, I beat the odds. We survived the zombie apocalypse to live another day. And that's a pretty good feeling. And when you die, it's just kind of the bleak, hopeless despair of ex existence. Oh well, we were gonna die anyway. We all die someday. Fun! All right guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, once again, that game is Dead of Winter. And if you guys check out my website, you will see I have a top 10 list of some of my favorite games. It changes a lot, but where it is right now, Dead of Winter is definitely in the top five. I love this game, it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend you check it out. Just like I highly recommend you check out my website. Tell me what you want to see on there because I'm still kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this one, throwing up whatever sounds good. Also guys, check out my Instagram, The Cranky Old Gamer. And if you like what you see, if you want to help my channel grow, please do contribute to my Patreon. There's a link at the very end. Y'all know what a Patreon is. I don't need to tell you about that. All right guys, hope you all had fun. See you later.